How do we make a sentence? Our sentence is collection of random words. If not, what are the required components of a sentence? Right? So, in order to answer these questions, we saw we, we are still looking at how to make a sentence, but we saw definitely sentences are not random collection of words. It requires uh, uh, words very carefully. So, uh, we were looking at required com components of a sentence and then we are still looking at how they all play a role in making a sentence, in the making of a sentence. And uh, the, the components of agreement that we looked at were number, person and gender. And then we talked about various things about them. And we sort of established that the there must be an agreement between a noun and a verb. And the noun that really agrees with the verb is a subject of the sentence. Okay? This is what we established yesterday. Sometimes what we may think is a subject in a sentence may not be grammatically the subject of the sentence. And these two examples in 1 and 2 clearly show us that Raju and Seema, these two nouns are not subjects of these two sentences. Right? There is no change in these two sentences since yesterday. All right? Whereas, According to the requirement of the agreement, the following noun agrees with the verb and therefore is the subject of the sentence in both, both of them. All right? Okay. Moving on, uh, we want to look at the categories and the abstract parts which play huge role in a sentence. So, once again, if you look at this sentence, the, the words that you see such as Raju, Chai and what is the verb there in sentence number 1? Verb is Pina, right? P, Seema, Seb, Khana, right? The words that you see in these sentences are called le lexical items. They belong to the group that is called lexical categories. Okay? And the things that we do not see clearly, that is the elements that, that are responsible for agreement and some other other stuff, they are called functional categories. They belong to a category which is labeled as functional category. Many a times they are going to be visible, many a times they are not going to be visible. Okay? Many a times such things are visible, many a time such things, by such things I mean functional categories are not visible in a sentence. Is this point making sense to you? When we say visible and not visible, this making sense? So, going back to the sentence again, is uh, what is visible and what is not visible? Raju, Chai, Pina, the lexical categories are going to be visible all the time. right? We are talking about functional categories. When we look at the components of agreement, is gender visible on the word Raju? Yes or no? No. We know it is masculine, 
but it is not visible. Likewise, it is not visible on the word seema. Okay? So, the masculine or feminine gender of the two nouns respectively are not visible. However, and, and, and not, not however, likewise the feminine gender of the noun chai, is that visible? It is not visible. Masculine gender of the word sebe, is that visible? Not visible. Plural marker on the verb save, is that visible? Couple of days ago, we have looked at plural markers, right? Is this plural marker visible on this word? Not visible. This is what I meant when I said, lot of times these things are not going to be visible. We need to see them carefully. When we look at the whole sentence, only then we see. Now, they are not visible with naked eyes. However, they play a great role in the sentence. Without them, without a proper matching between both of both these things, that is elements of functional categories, visible or not visible on lexical categories, without a matching, proper matching, which we call agreement, sentence is not possible. Therefore, we need to take into account the categories that are not visible. And here onwards, we are going to see lot of underlying things that are not ordinarily visible in a sentence. All right? Now, do you see any gender marker visible on the verb in the first sentence? P, na, P, you see that visible? Do you see the gender marker visible on the second verb? Yes. Is this is a is a plural marker visible on the verb khana? Yes. And uh, singular marker on the verb pina. That's not visible. Now the the point is, lot of things are not visible. Sometimes they may surface. Sometimes you may be able to see them, lot of times they are not visible. Elements that are not really visible many times are called functional categories or, or to put it the other way around, elements of functional categories are not many a times visible in sentences. So, we looked at uh, five features. What about uh, tense? What is the tense in these two sentences? In the first one, what is the sentence? What is the tense? Past tense. Do you see it visible anywhere? What part of this sentence tells you this is past tense? And, and of course, this question is only for people who can, who can figure out some of the things of Hindi. P, but you somebody said that is the marker of uh, feminine gender. Ne and P. So, ne is the tense marker? No, no. Indicates is not important. I, I, I understand what you are trying to say. That probably only in these types of sentences you see ne. Therefore, ne may be indicating some kind of past tense. That is not what we are talking about. That even though that is independently true, that is not the point right now. The point is, do we see past tense marker anywhere? No. Okay? So, that is that's also not visible. And then there are a couple of other things which I have not discussed. For example, for example, aspects. Uh, one right place to discuss aspect is these two sentences, but I will bring these two sentences back again and discuss that particular thing with you. Have you heard about these two words, these two terms, tense and aspect? Tense, everybody? What are the tenses in languages? Past, present, future and aspects. 
Have you heard or not? Uh, honestly. So, continuous or perfect are the examples of aspects. Now, let me repeat this thing to, to lot of you. If someone says continuous, past continuous, does that make any, what, what different, what sense does this make to you? Past continuous. The action was happening at that particular time. It was happening. It was happening, that is, it was in the process. process. It was under progress, right? Had already started, but not finished, okay? The, the element that talks about time, that gives you a sense of time is called tense. Okay? The element that gives you sense of time is called tense and the element which gives you extra information like this, something started but not finished, right? That is an example of aspect which is continuous aspect. There could be more uh, <coughs> perfective aspect. What, what would be the any, what would be an example of perfective aspect? Perfect aspect, what does it mean? He had finished the report. He had finished the report. That is, for sure, the, the action of finishing, we know that it has, it is over not just because it is past tense. Something else is there in a sentence which tells us that this is over. Okay? In many languages, including English, we can have perfect aspect even in the present tense. What was your example? The example that you, he had finished. Can we say he has finished? He has finished reports. We can say that, right? What is the difference between he had finished and he has finished? Sure, hold on. So, we are definitely talking about something which not only happened in the past. The reason why it sounds like past is because the process of report is over. Both in both the sentences, the report writing or doing or anything is over. What is it that causes the difference between has and had, which mean between these two sentences? So, had refers to past tense and has refers to present tense. So, there is a, is a possibility where we can say present perfect and past perfect. To underline this thing once, once more, what is the actual difference between the two? We, we decided one is past, the other is present, one is, both are perfect. But what is the difference in terms of their meanings? Just finish the report and the other one? Yes, finish the report maybe some time, time ago. Some Long time ago? Yeah, so, sure, you are, you are right, you are, you are right too. So, you are saying long time, some time ago is saying long time and the other one is just finished, right? So, what is the, can, can you reformulate your sentence? You are right, can you reformulate it? <coughs> Is question clear to everybody? No? Go ahead, go speak. No, no, no. Don't don't confuse me with the uh, with everything, everything else. My question is pretty simple. Is my question not simple? All I am saying, in both the cases, the eating lunch is over, right? I want to know if you said I had eaten my lunch, right? And the other is I have eaten my lunch, right? In both the cases, eating is over. The first one is 
past which one person says long time ago the other is just finished the all i want when i said reformulate the all i want to say just now and long time are relative dif difference in time compared to just now long time could be anything after a little while hope hope you ho hope you understand if we if we are referring to let's say 2 hours from now i have i have eaten my lunch right if it means to at at 12:30 right i had eaten my lunch refers to anything before that 12:30 it could be yesterday it could be 5 years ago so that's the difference between present perfect and past perfect okay all right now all these things play a huge role not only in formation of sentence but how we talk about different things okay that is there is a way to indicate not only time in the sentence that is in terms of present past and future but also we can indicate different different aspects on the verb different manners in which action whether finished in pro progress and couple of other things about them the elements of sentence that talk about such such things like perfection and continuation are called aspects so i'm i'm glad we covered that too now these are the things sometimes they are going to be visible so how do we say i am when i when i say i'm i'm eating what indicates continuation in this sentence ing where on the verb so if that indicates if that indicates uh, continuation then this is not invisible category okay if i say let's say let's say this full sentence i am eating so this is continuous aspect marker what's the tense marker in this sentence first of all which tense is this sentence in everybody knows this thing present per present tense now what's the aspect what what's the what's the element in this sentence which denotes tense sure i'll i'll just take your word for that this is the marker of tense which is let's say present right because we can say the same thing i was eating now you you know these things so all i am trying to do is to underline these categories in a sentence so again when we say i was eating this is aspect marker and this is tense marker the two things are not going to be the same thing they are two different elements in a sentence as a matter of coincidence in this case both tense marker and aspect markers are visible can we see both of them they are visible in some cases they are not going to be visible at least tense markers are not going to be visible when we say this sentence what is the sentence i eat mangoes or or for that matter i want to say i live in chennai so 1 2 3 and 4 let's talk about sentence 3 and 4 right what's the tense in 3 
present tense and tense in for which part of the sentence talks about this tense Verb talks about, verb is the place where you would ideally look for a marker of tense, but which part, which, where is that? So, this verb is telling us about, so why is this one not telling us? Is my question making sense to you? Do not worry about the answer. Also, I suggest you this has no bearing on your, in, your knowing English or not. As you can see, we are not talking about learning English or learning Hindi or any other language. We are talking about these categories. We are talking about functional categories involved in making of a sentence. My question is, if this indicates tense, then why is this one not indicating tense? I, I do not think we can come up with simpler sentences in English. Am I right? These, these are pretty simple sentences. So, how, how will we resolve this problem? I cannot say you are wrong completely, but at the same time you know that you are not right either. Am I, am I right about that? That the word, that's a verb, that's a word, right? And on that word, there is nothing else visible, not even ing. And if I am yet to talk about aspects, what's the aspect in this sentence? It's not that there is no aspect. For sure, there is some aspect here. Simple present, simple is not an aspect. Uh, there is something else, think about that. What does this sentence tell us? Is this talking about continuous? So, if I say I, I am living in Chennai then that will be continuous. If I say I live in Chennai, what is the difference between I live in Chennai and I am living in Chennai? Forget about tense, both are present tense. I live in Chennai and I am living in Chennai. Both are present tense sentences. Besides that, what is the difference between the two? In terms of their meaning? Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> I am eating right now. Absolutely. So, hold on, hold on. So, when I say I am living, so we are talking about let us say certain stretch of time in which I am in Chennai. If I say I live in Chennai, what sense does this give to you? Not, not just usually, until no specification given, it is just that I am, I, I, Be, without giving any indication of time that or without giving continuation, it tells you about a habitual routine thing that I am, I live in Chennai. It does not tell you when I am going to discontinue living there, right or anything else. Similarly, when I say I eat mangoes, it says I mean I do not have a problem. I, I can say, I mean we can remove mangoes and put other things as well. It talks about not continuity, it talks about in, in a sense it gives you indefinite reading, at the same time it gives you habitual reading. Therefore, sometimes this aspect is called either habitual aspect or indefinite aspect. See this thing? Now, this is just for you to see, but more than that what I want you to be convinced that each one of you is, I am sure, convinced that there is a difference between the meaning of these two sentences. I live in Chennai and I am living in Chennai, right? 
I live in Chennai and I am living in Chennai, you don't see the difference? That is all I mean, literally there is difference in the meaning, right? That is in the what verb indicates causes the difference, get this thing? Therefore, living is continuous aspect, you have already seen perfective aspect, this is another one, habitual or indefinite. So, besides the, so this one has aspect 2 which is not visible, that is unlike this where i n g where i n g is the marker of this continuity, there is no such marker here of aspect. At the same time, the way this thing marks tense, there is no marker of tense either. That is 0 marker for tense, 0 marker for aspect. Which is past tense of it is a right. So we can say since it is given, it is present. That's right. I am also saying the same thing. I am saying when you no say sure. I am saying you are right. What, what I am saying when you say it, then you see the change in the form of the verb, and you can say you can say it okay plus past becomes 8, right? But or, or we can say 8 is 8 plus past, whereas 8 is 8 plus present, which is this past at least has some change in the form of the verb and this present has got no change. Formally speaking, there is absolutely no change in the form of the word. That is what we mean when we say zero marker on tense. We remember and I, I, I want your careful attention here. We are not saying there is no tense. We, we are not saying there is no tense. There is tense which is present tense. So, all we are saying it is not visible because it has no obvious marker on it. And even more than that, what I want you to know is lot of elements of functional categories are sometimes going to be visible, sometimes going to be not visible. And this is not language specific, within the same language, sometimes they are going to surface, sometimes they are not going to surface. Are you with me? Making sense? Now, if someone asks you what is the marker of tense in English or let us say more specifically, what is the marker of present tense in English? We can, we can say like you said am is the marker of present tense, is marker of present tense or marker of present tense, they are all together called verb be, okay. let us say they are all markers of present tense. But when we say is, are, am are markers of present tense, are we giving the complete picture? The answer is no, because lot of times there is no marker of present tense. In examples like I eat mangoes, I live in Chennai. So, the same category present tense, sometimes visible, sometimes not visible. This is all, this is all I want you to keep in mind with, with all these examples. Before I move, any problem, confusion? Are we clear about tense and aspect? Trust me, these are underlying, underlying stuff and it, I am, I am very happy that you can see it fast and some of you have prior idea or knowledge about these things. It, it takes long time to get used to these terms, to see these terms. Not that we do not know them, we know them, but 
then we in then before we see these things and we really see their functioning it takes time so are we clear about the distinction between tense and aspect right all right no questions all right now in the next sentence clear everybody even non non speakers of hindi can figure out the meaning of these sentences 3 and 4 clear you know the you know the meaning you know the words all that my question is what is the tense in this sentence we i i purposely did not talk about past tense so far because i assume you know and the story of past tense is similar to present past tense could be more visible in in these cases also it's it's going to be visible right present tense sometimes is not very very much visible no 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 that that's one way of saying it you are right and I, i i don't mean to contradict that but all i am saying is on the word bare word what you are saying reference point there is no marker indicating tense we are we are used to seeing things in markers there is no marker indicating tense right however the past tense marker on this when you add past tense you get something else right i'll i'll show you there is a way to uh, you may have heard when you uh, have you heard about physical reactions and chemical reactions physical properties of reactions and chemical properties of reactions in in one of them when two things are mixed it's almost impossible to to separate them right there, there is a way to separate tense from past tense and the moment you separate past tense it comes in the bare form and then you won't be able to say that this is a reference point just hang in for a moment i'll show you that you add something else in the sentence past tense immediately comes out and then you cannot use the past form of the verb give me give me a moment i'll show you that meanwhile please tell me that therefore i didn't talk much about past tense meanwhile please tell me the tense in these two sentences you think so or you know so so what what tells you about present tense in this these sentences and now he is bringing in third one the another one so what tells you about present tense in this these two sentences right so it's just saying kal milo which part of it does it even indicate meaning wise any time in it do you see any sense of time in it okay forget kal also simply say milo right must say milo let's 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 forget time i think kal is the word which is which is giving you sense of future right fine let's drop that one must say milo in this sentence is there any reference of time we are not very clear about that we are not saying that don't meet today we could very well mean aaj or future exactly i i'm asking you what is it you're not clear it is present how because both both the positions need to be justified if it is not clear why is it not clear if it is present why is it present 
because there is no marker on the C, on the verb C, therefore it should be present tense? Because you have just seen something like that? That is not true. So, do you see the confusions and contradictions? Uh, Let us not talk about a lot of Hindi in this thing because there are everybody does not uh, speak Hindi to follow you at that level and therefore I am giving the glosses, proper glosses. Mil will not change anything. It simply Musse mil, the, the reference is not tum, it is something else. Milie is aap, aap musse milie. Milo is tum musse milo, and musse mil is more informal than that. Only the degree of formality changes. Mil, milo, or milie, nothing else changes. The point I am trying to show you that in these sentences there is no tense, absolutely no tense. It gives you a sense of tense tomorrow because of the word or because we know that definitely it is not past. When I ask you say Milo, we could not possibly be talking about past. We could either be talking about today or tomorrow or whenever. Therefore, it is restricted only to present and future and more likely as you were right that because there is no marker, we would tend to believe this is present tense, but actually there is no sense of time in these two sentences. All right? They are called imperative sentences. Uh, I, do, I do not want to throw in all kinds of words or terms same day. Uh, let me just cross check quickly. If you have heard that this word mood, anybody mood, not good mood or bad mood. No, that's all right. This, this, this is this is not a problem and not not an issue. So all I am let let's look at it the following way. Some sentences, particularly imperative ones, which indicate request or a uh, formal informal distinctions, such sentences, verbs in such sentences indicate no tense, have got no tense. Clear? Okay. Uh, I, I need to introduce this thing to show you little bit more on tense. Can you look at this screen? Are you looking at the screen? What does sentence number 5 tell you? It is a future tense sentence, right? It is a future tense sentence. Now, there are two markers of negation in this sentence. One is nahi and the other is mat. And this, this, do you see a star marker on mat? Do you see a star marker on mat? That star mark tells you that mat, if you use mat in this sentence, then the sentence is not good. So, we cannot say Raju school mat jayega. That is what that star tells you. The, the idea is there are two major markers of negatives in Hindi, in a language like Hindi, they are mat and nahi. With me? In sentence number 5, only one is allowed, the other one which is math is not allowed. When we say not allowed, it means if you try to use that one, then the sentence is bad. Just check with anybody who speaks Hindi, they will tell you. Can we say that? Yeah. 
sentence raju school mat jayega is that a good sentence no. not a good sentence all right now why we are going to look at it look at that in a moment however in the second sentence that is number 6 we can use either one of the two we can say nahi jao or mat jao either way the sentence is good the point that i that I am trying to make through these two sentences is out of the two negative markers, one math gets used in a sentence only when there is no tense. If you try to use this word math in any sentence which has tense, could be future, could be present, could be past, the sentence will not be right. The sentence will not be grammatical, the sentence will not be good sentence. This is another proof to tell you that sentence number 6 has got no tense. Look at 3 and 4 again. Can we use math in these two sentences? Musse math milo. We can say that. Musse math milie. We can say that, right? Sentence 1 and 2, can we use math in 1? Raju ne chai math pi. No. Raju Seema ne sev math khaye. Can we say that? No. Now, if some of you speak Hindi, I am completely accepting your judgment about these sentences by judgment meaning grammaticality judgment, right? which again reflects things that I have told you earlier, that these things are part of knowledge of language. You know about the grammaticality of these strings, but I am positive that you are looking at these sentences for the first time. Am I right? It is your judgment that Raju ne chai mat pi is not a good sentence, right? But did you think about this sentence before Raju ne chai mat pi? Now, the reason why I am asking you this thing, not that there is anything wrong that you did not see these sentences so far, how did you become 25, 23? without looking at these sentences, that is not the point. The point is, as a speaker of language, we do not need to look at these things, yet we know these things, right? These things have happened to us when we were figuring out rules while acquiring language. If you want to learn a language with instruction, you need to be told these things, these differences. If you are doing things, if, if you are growing up with the language, you do not need to do this. Yet you know that and if later on someone tells you like this, sentence number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, pretty simple sentences are going to look like magic to you. That they contain kinds of information that we never paid attention to, however we use these things 100 times a day nowhere you are going to find a single speaker of Hindi who will say Raju ne chai mat pi. Point taken? I have told you that I do want you to keep applying some of these things to other languages as well. These things are available in other languages too and I can make that blank blanket statement on the basis of my understanding of generative facts. I just do not know the examples of them. That also shows you the role of input, that I can say that there must be two negative markers in Tamil also, there must be two negative markers in Malayalam also. But because I do not have Tamil or Malayalam input, so I do not know. 
Now, there are going to be language internal differences too. In a language like Hindi, the negative marker is always going to be a word, nahi or mat. In a language like Tamil, sometimes negative markers are merged together with the verb, right. Same thing applies in Kannada, same thing applies in Malayalam. Now, these are language internal facts, language internal things. However, negative markers are going to be there. Negative markers can only follow, ne, follow verbs. In, in, is, that, is that true in Tamil, negative markers follow verbs? So, how do, how do we say, how do we say uh, this one? Mat milo. Loudly. Loudly. So, which? Par Okay. means So, what is the negative marker in that? Par plus or vendam is a separate word which comes after par which means don't come, yeah, right? Don't see. don't see. So, negative marker is following the, the verb. See this thing? Negative markers may be preceding in Tamil too, right? I think if you say a sentence like this, Raju's school nahi jayega, in these sentences, you will need to use the negative marker illa. Am I right? So, similar distinction exists that if we are talking about tenseless sentences, you have to use a different negative markers, a different negative marker. If we are using a tense sentences with tense, you need to use a different negative marker. Can we use the word illa in the previous one? Must say don't meet with me or meet with me. When we say do not meet with me, can we use illa? No. Do you see the distinction that I am trying, that, that I am talking about? The distinction that exists with, between mat and nahi is the distinction that exists in Tamil. Now, for every sentence we do not have either time or we do not need to do this thing. This is where I, I request you, I suggest you please keep thinking about the languages that you speak, that you grew up. Keep applying these things and then you will, you will be able to see that. Now, the final point that I, uh, I make and then we will stop, uh, no, I will come to that later. Now, look at this. In English, so I, let us say, let us say this thing in past tense. How do I say this sentence, number 3 in past tense? I ate mangoes, right? Everybody, you do not need to write this sentence. But now I ask you to negate that sentence. Say it again. Did not eat mangoes. Do you see what is going on? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Slow, slow, slow. I know you guys are very intelligent, but this Keeping slow, keeping the speed under control limit always helps. The moment you introduce negative, the tense marker is going to get dissociated with the verb, okay? is going to get dissociated with the verb and then you see verb in the bare form. What is that? We say, I did not eat. So, did not eat, we cannot say, I not ate, right? So, so much so that it makes you laugh. Neither do we say, I ate not. We need to say, I did not eat. The use of negative markers in a language like English 
separates these two from past tense. So, the past tense becomes this indicates past tense and then we have to put not and then the verb comes in zero form which has got no tense. So, if this is the verb, if this is the form of the verb which has got no tense marker, then this is the form of the verb which we say it has tense, but the marker is 0. If you can see this thing, then I am showing you something absolutely abstract and invisible. Trust me, there is no microscope for this. Do you see this thing? Do you see or not? That is true my dear, but what I am saying something else. I am saying after did is removed from the verb, this verb is bare form. This does not have any tense marker on it. The tense is here, right? Because this is a zero form, therefore this is a zero form and the marker is 0. There is tense, but the marker of tense on this verb in this sentence is 0. Right? So, the introduction of negative helps you separate tense and tense and verb in a language like English. Okay? And then you can see the bare form. Now, as we move on further, please remember this example. These are the examples that are not coming just like that. These, these are the example that we are talking about. Talk, we are talking about these examples purposely. I want you to understand or I will bring you to this point again that when we say tense marker comes before the verb or after the verb. right? that is a very trivial and superficial discussion. What actually happens is tense marker, when it, when it, when you, when you see them around the verb, actually it is not around the verb, it is around tense and it so happens that tense is found around verb. So, the negative marker is associated with tense, which itself is an invisible category. Negative markers are not invisible category. Negative markers you can see clearly in many languages. They get attracted to verbs because tense are hosted on verbs. I will talk about subject and predicate some other time. Therefore, verbs become the most significant aspect of a sentence. Therefore, sometimes it is also said that verbs are powerhouse of a sentence. All kinds of information about agreement, number, person, gender, tense, aspect, you can see in or around verb. Hope some of this makes sense. Yes? Then I think we need to stop, right?